Bonjour friends. Are you ready for part two of the poppy painting class? Um, I did let the watercolors dry overnight. So you can see these little beautiful areas of crystallized and pulled color that just organically happened by letting the watercolor do its thing and just letting it be, letting it go. Um, this is the piece that we started with where we worked wet on wet. And so today we're going to begin as we did before. We're going to wet all of our colors and let them soak so that we have the saturated pigment. Remember our philosophy of beauty and imperfection. And this is our playtime. Let's get to have fun. We're going to wet all of our colors. We also have our light, our gold, a little bit of opalescence. So for this part of the watercolor, I'm going to use the square brush. It's a three-quarter wash brush and remember from before that water is our friend so I'm going to load up like generously with water. I'm going to grab some of this pigment and then I'm going to go to the top of the poppy bloom and see how I'm lightly just uh, the movement of my hand like back and forth to make those striations that you would see on a poppy bloom and as you need to Reference poppies online. There are so many images of poppies for you to look at. I'm going to grab some more of the red. And then I'm dipping the corner into the alizarin crimson to create that area where the poppy folds within. And then I'm going to do the same thing here on what would be the bottom of the poppy. Let's just do a little poppy petal just with the side of your brush. So then within in the darkest spot, instead of just going to Payne's Gray or Black, I'm picking up a little bit of, let's see what this pigment is. It's a little bit of cobalt blue. And this is just going to give you some more uh, interesting areas. And of course at the bottom, I'm going to go ahead and give our uh, little poppy here some shadow. And then I'm going to use a smaller square brush and just using water. I'm just going to drop some water into these areas and let the watercolor dance and create crystallized pull and do its thing. And you'll see when you add just droplets of water, it's going to create like some of these beautiful uh, areas that we achieved here. So now we are going to go into our greens with our round brush. This is the number six. I'm going to pick up some lime, pick up some uh, Naples yellow, a little bit of turquoise, a little bit of purpley blue, more water. And the more that you paint, the more that you'll uh, find what, uh, you know, amount of water to pigment that you enjoy. It's just a matter of practice, putting the time in, and playing. You know, every time you go to an art supply store or shop online, buy something you've never tried before and just play. You never know when you're going to find like your favorite um, new powder, you know, that you can, that's water soluble, that you can mix with your watercolors or a new pen. Um, a new paint color. I'm always having love affairs with new paint colors. So let's go ahead and let this dry. 